Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. Uh, become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. Uh, before we do get started, I want to let you know today's episode is brought to you by the financial support of our listeners. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your support. And uh, you can support the show at support.greatdetectives.net. And I did want to let you know ever so briefly that I've added a limited time additional thank you gift uh, to the site. As usual, all donations of $7 or more will receive... At their request, so you have to email me after the donation to request it, and a Doc Savage audiobook novel, The Forgotten Realm. Great little Pulp Fiction novel, and you have to email to request it after the donation. And that's at support.greatdetectives.net. But now let's go ahead and get into today's episode of The Amazing Mr. Malone. Seek and ye shall find. The Amazing Mr. Malone. <laughs> Operator. Operator. Get me the office of John J. Malone. The National Broadcasting Company presents The Amazing Mr. Malone, an exciting half hour of mystery starring George Petrie as the lawyer whose practice before every type of bar has become a legend. Our locale is the city of Chicago. The time, the present, and the hero of these weekly adventures, the amazing Mr. Malone. Malone's the name, John J. Malone, attorney and counselor at law. Those of you who have dropped by the office before know how proud I am of my collection of cliches. Tonight, let's explore the possibilities offered by Seek and Ye Shall Find. I suppose that goes for headaches, too. As a case in point, I give you Larry Barker. Larry's the rugged-looking boy making his way down the fourth-floor corridor of the Martin Building. Right now, he's looking for trouble, and when he stops in front of room 419, the odds are 20 to 1 he'll find it. Tom. Yeah? I'm looking for Frank Pulaski. Well, if you don't find him, it ain't because you didn't try the right place. Are you Pulaski? Uh-huh. My name is Larry Barker. The bookie? I don't think we have to go into that. Whatever you say, Mr. Barker. Sit down. Thanks. What can I do you for? That remains to be seen. Someone told me you're one of the best private detectives in Chicago. Naturally, I ain't going to deny it. Well, we'll soon find out. Take a look at this picture. Yeah, you're not bad. That happens to be my wife. It's even better. I don't like those kind of jokes, Pulaski. Sorry. Now, do you think you could watch her for me? I don't know why not. Her first name's Sheila. Sheila? Yes. I want to follow day and night. I want to know everyone she sees, but everyone. Can you handle it? Well, now, let's see if we understand each other, Mr. Barker. You suspect your wife's running around. Did I say that? Well, why else would you want to sick a tail on her? That's none of your business. Now, either you want the job or you don't. Going to run into a lot of dough. So? So? What about in advance? No dice. Look, for a job like this, I'll have to put on three extra men. I don't care how many you put on. In my business, I only pay off on results. I don't do business that way, Mr. Barker. Well, I do. In that case, we're both wasting time. You've got to find yourself another boy, and i got to find myself another client. Let's hope we both know where to look. Oh, taxi. Taxi. Can 
Can I help you, honey? Taxi! You don't seem to be having much luck. Maybe I'll do better calling a cop. Now, wait a minute, baby. I'm not trying to pick you uh, up. Taxi! I mean it, Mrs. Barker. Look, I... How did you know my name? Oh, you'd be surprised what I know about you, Sheila. Maybe you'd like to look at my card. Frank Pulaski, private investigation. Your hubby was in to see me yesterday. Larry? Mm-hmm. What did he want? This is no place to talk. Now, look, I got a brand new car right around the corner. You can say anything you've got to right here. Well, it's uh, kind of embarrassing, Sheila. I don't like to be seen taking money from a woman in a public thoroughfare. What are you talking about? Well, naturally, you can't expect me to divulge this kind of information for free. You're absolutely right, Mr. Pulaski. So you keep your information and I'll keep my money. Taxi? Looks like I ain't gonna make a buck from the Barker family, no how. But I like you better than I do your husband. Thanks. No, I mean it. If I were you, Sheila, I'd watch my step. Larry's checking up on you. You're lying. Nope. As a matter of fact, I did a little checking on you myself. Why, you... Now, now, take it easy. As far as I can learn, you never once stepped out of line. What's the matter with that husband of yours, anyway? Must be out of his mind. You may be right. If I were you, honey, I'd never put up with it. Thanks for your advice, Mr. Pulaski. I'll let you know if I take it. Just a second. I said just a second. What's the idea? Oh, hello. You must be John J. Malone. I ain't a young doctor. Your office told me I'd find you here. They have orders not to tell anyone that. So your secretary said, but when she noticed I was a blonde, she seemed to think it made a difference. I come to think of it, she's right. Come on in, lover. The name is Barker. Mrs. Barker. I don't like to be formal with my clients. What makes you think I'm going to be a client? You mean this is a social call? That's even better. Sit down. Thank you. Cigarette? No, thanks. Drink? If you don't mind, Mr. Malone, I'd like to get right down to business. All you pretty women are alike. Okay, Sheila, when do you want me to start suit? When, when do I want you to start suit? Well, don't you want a divorce? How did you know that? Didn't they tell you I was amazing? How did you know I wanted a divorce? Well, you announced yourself as Mrs. Barker, and then I took a look at your left hand. That little white ring of flesh told me you were wearing a wedding band until a couple of hours ago. That's pretty obvious. It always is after someone points it out. What's your husband do? He's a betting commissioner. You wouldn't be married to Larry Barker. Yes. I'm impressed. I hope you do as well on your next marriage. There's not going to be a next marriage. I just want a divorce. I don't even want alimony. Why? Have you ever been married to a jealous man? Uh, not recently. I am not clowning, Mr. Malone. Sorry. Larry and I were married six years ago. And ever since the first day, he suspected the worst. Does he have reason? No. You know, I believe you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, it's quite all right. But if Larry had no cause to be jealous, why is he? I don't know and I don't care. He's killed everything I ever felt for him. He even tried to hire a private detective to keep tabs on me. Who? A man named Frank Pulaski. That was the final straw. I don't blame you. But suppose Larry won't agree to a divorce. What then? I thought you were the lawyer. That's right. I am. All right, Sheila. I'll let you know when I dope out something. <laughs> And in the last three weeks... Yes, sir, can I help you? Larry Barker in? Well, he's very busy. Well, he can't be that busy. Tell him Al Donnelly's here. What is it, Joyce? There's a gentleman to see you, Mr. Barker. Can't you handle it? He wants to speak to you personally. His name is Al Donnelly. Oh. Well, send him right in. Can you please go in? Thanks. Where do we go? First door to your right. Come on in, Donnelly. Glad to see you, Mr. Barker. What have you got? Plenty. I told you my outfit delivers the goods. Lucky you didn't get yourself tied up with that Frank Velasky. Well, what's the story? Just what you thought. Your wife's been seeing some guy on the sly. I knew it. I knew it. Spent practically the whole afternoon in his apartment. Who is he? John J. Malone. A lawyer? Mm Mm-hmm. And you know his rep. I've heard a couple of stories. Well, they are. Just a case of putting two and two together. All right, Donnelly. Beat it. What about my check? I'll mail it. Oh, now, look, Mr. Barker. What's the matter? Don't you trust me? Our deal called for something quite different. Well, just for that, you'll wait. Joyce. Yes? Show him out. Never mind. I can find my own way out. What happened? Nothing. That wasn't the impression I got listening at the door. So, you were eavesdropping. I guess I should be ashamed of myself. I've got a good mind. Sure you have, Larry. Mine's the one that's bad. 
To think in nine years I would have gotten smarter. What are you babbling about? I was just reminiscing. Well, do it on your own time. I don't have any time of my own. Every minute belongs to you, remember? Are you going to start that again? Yes. I'm entitled to know where I stand. You've been stalling me long enough. Nine years. Nine rotten years. Well, now you've got grounds for a divorce. You're crazy. I heard what that Donnelly said. Sheila's been running around with Malone. Shut up! You didn't actually think I was going to marry you? Yes, I did. You stupid little fool. Why, Sheila's worth a million like you. She's no better than I am. Ask Malone. You keep your mouth shut, understand? Don't you dare say a word about her. I only hope Mr. Malone is his gallant. Don't give it a thought, Joyce. He won't talk. I'll see to that personally. crazy things, or one of those bells that now and then rings, just one of those it's things. It's about time, Malone. It was... How did you get in here? What difference does it make? Shut the door. I take it that gun is loaded. What do you think? It proves conclusively I should never show up at my office as long as I stay in my apartment. Yes. You do all right there, don't you? Come again. I understand you and my wife had a nice little talk today. Oh, you must be Larry Barker. How did you guess? It figured. How long have you been carrying on with Sheila? How long have I what? You heard me. Yeah, but I'm sure I misunderstood. You think your wife and me? Yes. You got a real nasty mind. Now listen, you. Tell me something, Barker. How do you get like that? The way I see it, either you once took a beating from some woman or... Nobody puts anything over on me. Then I got another theory. You must be playing around yourself. What? Sure, I bet that's it. So because you can't be trusted, you don't believe anybody else can. Why, you know... I guess that means I'm right, huh? You're gonna stay away from Sheila, you understand? Who's gonna make me? Me! You think you got a kick coming? You're absolutely right, Malone. All right, come on, Malone. It's time to rise and shine. Are you going to lay there and pamper yourself? Uh, oh. Who's that? Well, just open those big brown eyes and look. Hmm? Oh, that wouldn't be Lieutenant Brooks. You give an odds? What are you doing here? Now, that's no way to talk to a man who saved your life. Who saved my life? Sure. While you were out cold, I sampled some of your liquor. You know that stuff could kill you? Help me, help me. If I were you, kiddo, I'd stay right there. It may save you another trip down. All right, who did this job on you? Never mind. Larry Barker, wasn't it? How did you know? I'm psychic. How about Barker? I'll take care of him. A couple of boys down at headquarters think you did already. What? Yeah, yeah. They found his body 20 minutes ago with three slugs in his brain. Oh, no. Oh, yes. And you'll die when you find out who they think put him there. Um, you want to put your head on, Malone? Or will you go like that? You are listening to The Amazing Mr. Malone. It's the Silver Jubilee on NBC. Now, Sunday, we've got more shows that promise to deliver the tops in mystery adventure listening. For example, Tom Conway stars as that always debonair gentleman adventurer, Simon Templer, alias The Saint. Then there's Dimension X with stories of science fiction, tales of the universe as it might be in the future. And a little later, join Mr. Moto in his latest adventure. Yes, Sunday means great listening for you with The Saint... Dimension X and Mr. Moto, all over this NBC station. And now, back to the amazing Mr. Malone. It just goes to prove you should never sleep in the daytime. Here, Larry Barker tucked me in. When I awoke, a police lieutenant named Sidney Brooks was standing over me. I couldn't make up my mind which was more frightening, Brooks' news or his face. What's the matter, Malone? You look unhappy. Now, let me get this straight, lieutenant. You got it straight. Larry Barker's been murdered. And you think well, I... Well, it's a possibility. You had a run-in with him. Well, when you found me, I was unconscious. Uh, how do I know you weren't faking? Listen, you It's Shlemiel. a possibility. Now, look, Brooks. What are you getting so excited for? I said it was a possibility. The probabilities are something else again. Now, what was your trouble with Barker? 
Oh, he had some screwy idea I was horsing around with his wife. Were you? No. You're slipping. This is not the Malone I know and love. Sheila came to me to get her a divorce. Why? She got another guy on the string? No, she just couldn't stomach Larry anymore. He was crazy jealous. Well, so he probably never would have let her go. Well, that problem's over now. You know, I hate to disagree with you, Counselor, but I think her problem's the first beginning. I don't see how. You're not looking in the right places. You say Barker was crazy jealous. He would have fought a divorce. So? So she took the other way of getting rid of him. You're crazy. You know, I would have bet you'd say that. Whenever you're stuck for an ass. I tell you, she didn't kill him, Lieutenant. Where is she now? Now, where else would she be? In the brig? Now, how in the world did you ever figure that out? You know, I guess you are amazing. All right, Malone, let's go. I didn't kill him, Malone. You've got to believe that. I do, Sheila. I'm sorry I can't make it unanimous. Look, Brooks, why don't you use your head for a change? Oh, why don't you... You admit her husband would have fought the divorce? How would he know I was getting one? Malone told her. I did not. He thought our relationship was purely social. All right, then she told her. That's not true. And when Larry said he wouldn't let you go, you let him have it. You don't believe that yourself. Well, she's here, ain't she? Yeah. Then I must believe Look, her. Sidney, you got this all wrong. When was Barker killed? At six o'clock tonight. All right, Sheila, tell him what you were doing at that time. Well, I, I was watching television. Ooh, what you said. Don't be so cute. All right, all right, Sheila. Where were you watching this, you should excuse the expression, television? At home. It's funny you didn't see your husband's murder. I guess uh, Milton Burrow was much more exciting, huh? Eh? Oh, oh, wait a minute, I forgot. At about a quarter of six, I went out for a walk. Oh, come now, honey, you can do better. Why don't you give that tongue of yours a rest? Listen, Sheila, did anyone see you while you were out? No. Well, when you got back to the house... She never got back. We picked her up on Madison and Van Buren. That's the police for you, always molesting innocent bystanders. Yeah, that's us. We beat her, too. Sussman and I took turns. I got tired. Oh, why don't you scout around and find out who else who had it in for Barker? You got any suggestions? Yeah. Larry was playing around on the side. I don't believe it. Of course he was. He practically admitted it in my office. That's why he was ready to believe the worst of you, to justify himself. Well, assuming, uh, and mark you, I say assuming... I hear you. There was another woman. So What? We'll know that what when you find her. You mean when you find her? You expect uh-huh. me? Uh-huh. I've done my part, Malone. I found Sheila. You get your own girl. Who's there? Who's there? Hi, Joyce. You've got your nerve. That's what they all say. Now, look, mister, I don't know who you are, but if you don't get out of here... You call a cop? Yes. The number is State 48956. What are you waiting for? Who are you? Pulaski is my name. Frank Pulaski. I'm a private dick. You know, like the Falcon. What do you want? Look, uh, why don't I sit down? So, uh, this is what they call a love nest, huh? What do you mean by that? Nothing. Too bad about your boss. My boss? Larry Barker. Somebody done him in. You're lying. Think so? Here, take a look at this headline. Book he killed in Gold Coast Department. Lawrence Barker, better known as... Oh, no. Well, that's the way it goes. Larry. Is... Is this why you came here? Not exactly. You see, uh, the cops think his wife knocked him off. They're crazy. Well, she seemed like the best bet. Of course, you and I know better. What do you mean? Well, Barker came to my office yesterday to hire me to keep tabs on his missus. That's a lie. He hired... Al Donnelly. Sure. But that was only after I turned him down. Now, he was a tough man to get a buck out of. You'd think his wife would be more generous. Huh? Well, I thought she, at least, would let me have a hundred for tipping her off what was going on, but no. So, then I thought of you. I don't understand, Pulaski. Well, I wondered why a guy like Barker would be watching his missus when she never once straight off the reservation. Then it occurred to me that maybe he liked to put on the war paint himself. I wouldn't know. Are you kidding, Joyce? Who would know better? Are you suggesting... Mm Mm-hmm. Get out. Oh, now, you don't want to take that attitude, sweetie. Like I said, this was only a theory. Now, for 500 clams, I'd be willing to forget it. Get out! If I do, I'll go straight to Malone. I don't care where you go. Well, you can't say later that I didn't give you a chance. I'll bet you ten Malone will be willing to take it. Yeah? Hi, Malone. Do I know you? 
No, but think what you've been missing. I'm willing to pass it up. Ah, you'll be making a great mistake, Counselor. You're representing Sheila Barker, aren't you? Well? Well, how'd you like to get her off? Maybe you better come in. Thanks. Hey, you lawyers do all right. I don't believe you mentioned your name. I don't believe I did. It's Pulaski, Frank Pulaski. Oh. Don't tell me you heard of me. Only this afternoon. Sheila Barker told me you were working for her husband. Well, she got the story twisted. He wanted me to go to work, but I couldn't see it. We couldn't get together on a fee. That's tough. Tougher than you think. Imagine me sitting here with everything I know. And what do you know? Is it worth 500 fish? It might be. But suppose I told you that Barker was playing around. I figured that out for myself. Yeah, but I know her name. Wouldn't she pay off? Hmm? Well, you must have braced her first. You know, you're pretty cute. I bet you say that to all the boys. Who's the girl? First, let me see the color of your dough. Come on, Pulaski, who's the girl? Let's go. I asked you something. Don't ever do that again. Don't tempt me. Now, what's her name? Well? Joyce, Joyce Crane. You wouldn't be trying to kid me, would you? Wouldn't I? Not if you were in your right mind. Where can I find her? The Comstock. Thanks a lot, Pulaski. You've been a great help. That's okay, Counselor. The pleasure was all mine. You'll be surprised what I'll do for you in the future. <laughs> you're selling, mister. I'm not interested. How do you know? Do you see my line? I take my chances. You can't afford to, Joyce. Aren't you being just a little bit familiar? Well, if you think I'm obnoxious now, wait till you know me better. My name is Malone. So? Well, let me give myself my full billing. It's John J. Malone, attorney in concert law. Hooray for you. Can I come in? You can say everything you want to right there. Everything? Look, you're not fooling me, Malone. I know Pulaski's been to see you. Oh, I kind of hoped it would be a surprise. No, he announced his intention as he left. I see. I see something else. What? Mary Barker was right. You wouldn't have made him a good wife. You're much too possessive. Why, you know... Now, careful. There may be kiddies listening. But you are possessive. You proved it when you killed him. Get out. You're forgetting, lover. I am out. You never invited me in. <laughs> Mr. Big Mouth, I had to go and remind her. Hey, buddy. Me? Yeah. I wonder if you could settle an argument for me and my friend here. What is it? He says you're John J. Malone. Well? And I got a gun that says you're going to get in this car. Who's right? Apparently both of you. <laughs> get in. You fellas yeah. ought to be ashamed of yourselves. You're just confirming what every stranger thinks about Chicago. <laughs> Things like this don't happen anymore. Don't they? <laughs> yeah, I guess they do. Well, whose lap do I sit on? Move over, Wally. I'm watching him. You know, I got a friend who won't believe this. He's a police lieutenant. Think of that. Uh... You're not even impressed. <laughs> you think his feelings will be hurt? Absolutely. So I tell him. You talk too much, Malone. You may be right. Sure I am. I ought to know. I talk too much, too. <laughs> all right, Wally. Let's find a nice, quiet spot where instead of all this dialogue, we can get a little action. You are listening to The Amazing Mr. Malone. It's the Silver Jubilee on NBC. Sunday, the NBC Symphony inaugurates its 1951 summer concert series. Conducting the orchestra will be the world-renowned Alfred Wallenstein, with Patrice Munsell, glamorous soprano of the Metropolitan Opera, as guest soloist. Also in the Sunday listening lineup is another visit with the Blandings. The Blandings, as portrayed by Betsy Drake and Cary Grant, are the proud but somewhat harried owners of that famed dream house. The NBC Symphony summer concert and Mr. and Mrs. Blanding show are only two of the fine programs heard Sunday as part of NBC's Silver Jubilee. And now back to the amazing Mr. Malone. Well, that's life for you. Obviously, somewhere along the line, I put my foot in it. Five minutes after Wally found his nice, quiet spot, that same foot was around my neck. The next thing I knew, I was at police headquarters, and it had begun to rain. <laughs> But I was the only one getting wet. Lieutenant Brooks was in charge of the downfall. Cut that out. You want to draw me? I thought that would bring you around. You didn't have to do that. Oh, it was too good an opportunity to waste. Here's a towel. Uh, 
Thanks. Better get the back of your neck, Malone. You're not dry behind the ears. Oh, that's a good one. How'd I get here anyway? A prowl car found you in Evanston. Recognizing you as my comrade in arms, they brought you here. Why didn't they take me to a hospital? I would have scalped them if they had. Where's Sheila Barker? The way she'd been for the past 12 hours. Well, you gotta let her go. Who do you think did this job on me? Well, you tell me you were there. Well, I don't know their names, but they were obviously hired by the same party who killed Larry Barker. If you want a description... I wouldn't care to hear it. Now, look... We well, already picked them up. One is Wally Forbes, and the other is a boy named Tony Ferrara. How do you know they're the right one? They admitted it. Oh. Well, then we shouldn't have any trouble getting them to confess that Joyce hired them. That I doubt. Now, look, Brooks. They're friends of Frank Pulaski. What? Yeah, yeah, they were just doing him a favor. I don't get it, Brooks. I just don't get it. Well, you would if I had my way. I tell you, Sheila didn't kill her husband. All right, then, who did? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I just thought of something. Oh, no, not again. What does it take to stop you? Parker had a private dick working for him. Pulaski? No, this was another boy named, uh... Oh, what was his name? Now, how should I know? Well, Joyce Crane would. What do you say we go up and see her? Uh, look, look, kiddo, you've had a tough day. Now, why don't you let me drive you home? What's the point? There ain't no gal there. No, Joyce runs a much livelier spot. Let's try it anyway. Hello, Joyce. Don't tell me you're back again. I wouldn't slam the door, lover. This time I brought along a friend. This is Lieutenant Brooks. How do you do? Look, Lieutenant, I don't know what Malone told well, you. Well, that's just the trouble. He didn't tell me a thing. Maybe you can help out. May we come in? No. I think we'd better. Is that an official request? Well, I didn't flash my badge. Look, why can't we keep this on a friendly basis? Well, I don't like him. Me? Hey, the girl's got taste. Sit down. Thank you. Now, what do you want to know? Well, Mr. Malone here has come up with a very interesting theory. You see, Joyce, there's one character in this little drama we've forgotten. Now, you don't believe that Sheila killed Larry Barker, do you? Yes, I do. You've changed your mind. It's a woman's prerogative. Well, let's hold Sheila in abeyance for a while. But getting back to this character we've overlooked, what's the name of the private dick Larry hired? You mean Pulaski? No, no, Pulaski never went to work for him. This is the boy who actually did the job, the one who tailed Sheila to my apartment. Al Donnelly? Donnelly, that's the name. What's he got to do with this? Well, let's suppose Larry never paid him for the job. He didn't. And that gives Donnelly a motive. You're crazy. The only reason Larry didn't pay him is because he was busy. But Donnelly expected to be paid right there and then. No. Larry had a right to check and see whether his information was in McCoy. Once Larry found out Sheila was retaining you to get her divorce, he agreed to pay off. How do you know that? Because Larry told me as much. Then it's your theory. Sheila killed him. She knew she'd never be free any other way. You really want to see her burn, don't you? I most certainly do. Bloodthirsty little girl, ain't she? Well, what do you say, Counselor? I say it's about time you did something. Now, what are you mumbling about? She's the one we want. Are you out of your mind? That's possible, too, but it doesn't alter the conclusion. You kill Larry Barker. No! Yes! Well, all right, Brooks. Fool everybody and make like a police lieutenant. <laughs> Trouble, little man? Something bothering you? Yeah, you're breathing. Why did Joyce kill Barker? Well, I told you that at the beginning. She was in love with him, and she was getting older every day. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Well, she'd been going with him for nine years, always deluding herself that someday he'd marry her. When she finally woke up, he was kidding her. She pumped three slugs in him. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, how'd she discover that? From Barker's actions. Here he thought his wife was giving him a dose of his own medicine, and he still refused to let Sheila go. But you'll never guess what clinched it for me. Yeah, probably not. Well, when Larry came to my apartment, he accused me of running around with Sheila. He slugged me before I had a chance to tell him Sheila merely retained me to get a divorce. Yeah, but Joyce claimed Larry told her that. Which proved conclusively she was lying. Uh, well, all I can say is all that publicity certainly went to your head. What are you talking about? Well, Time Magazine said you were a great novelty. Oh, that? Yeah, a guy who doesn't get bopped on a noggin. But you certainly proved them wrong today. They also said you were a great switch for a radio cop, that you seemed to know your business. Uh, is there any doubt about that? Well, show me where you did so great here. Well, that's easy. I put Sheila Barker in jail, and you were the one who got her out. You're darn tootin'. Yeah, but uh, now that she's out, where is she? Hey, that's right. I ought to call her for a date. That you'd be wasting your time, Counselor. You mean she's going out with you? Uh, you know, I guess I'm pretty amazing myself. Good night, Malone. You ever hear the 
story of the great athlete? This boy went in for field events. He used to put the shot. One day, he put it in the wrong place. I'll tell you all about it next week, so why not pick me up at my office at the same time? I'll be waiting for you. Good night. George Petrie was starred as John J. Malone, with Larry Haynes as Lieutenant Brooks. Our program is written by Eugene Wang and directed by Richard Lewis. The Amazing Mr. Malone is based on the character created by Craig Rice and produced by Bernard L. Schubert. The events and characters in this story were entirely fictional and any resemblance to persons living or dead is entirely coincidental. This is Fred Collins speaking. The Amazing Mr. Malone has come to you from New York. Stay tuned for The Man Called X, next over most NBC stations. Welcome back. Well, the dialogue in this episode was just wow. It, it was really uh, uh, probably some of the uh, most uh, over-the-top, hard-boiled uh, dialogue uh, we've uh, heard in just a real in a really long time. And I, I loved it. Just a, a lot of clever uh, turns, very nicely done. And uh, kind of cute how they worked in uh, the review from Time Magazine. Though, you could almost find the Time Magazine review somewhat surprising because we know this was essentially the same show, only with different stars, as uh, the 1950 series on ABC. But ABC was not as widely watched by Americans, and perhaps it wasn't watched as widely by uh, television reviewers. Or radio reviewers, excuse me. Uh, anyway, to listener comments and feedback, Patrick says of our star George Petrie, loved him in The Honeymooners. And uh, he did actually have uh, recurring uh, roles uh, in The Honeymooner series, most notably, apparently, as uh, uh, Fred uh, Freddie M- uh, Mueller, uh, but uh, did other roles as well, appeared in 14 of the classic 39 one way or another. I've seen a few of the Honeymooners, but that's on one of my list of uh, things to do is to watch all of the classic 39. Haven't quite made it yet, but we'll get there one of these days. All right, well, that will do it for today. We will be back tomorrow as the Shepherd Matter continues, and then join us back here next Tuesday for another episode of The Amazing Mr. Malone. Send your comments to Box13 at GreatDetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And uh, become one of our friends on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham, signing off. This is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.